Welcome to our latest video on the topic of group 4 chlorides. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to describe the bonding that exists in group 4 chlorides and how this influences the chemical and physical properties they exhibit. You should also be able to explain why carbon tetrachloride CCl4 does not react with water, but silicon tetrachloride SiCl4 does. And finally, you should be able to describe what you see happening when SiCl4 reacts with water and be able to explain what is meant by the term octet expansion. Now, in our previous videos, we've learnt that group 4 elements can either be plus 4 oxidation state or plus 2 oxidation state. And the plus 2 oxidation state becomes more stable down group 4. And this is due to the inert pair effect. So you can see from this table that carbon has oxidation states of plus 4 and plus 2, and the plus 4 is the most stable oxidation state. Silicon only has an oxidation state of plus 4. Germanium has an oxidation state of plus 4 and plus 2, but the plus 4 is the most stable. Tin has oxidation states of plus 4 and plus 2, but the plus 4 state is most stable. And lead has an oxidation state of plus 4 and plus 2, and the plus 2 oxidation state is the most stable. Now the inert pair effect is the tendency for the S2 electrons not to be used in bonding. So as you go down the group, the inert pair effect increases, and that's why group 4 elements down the group have a tendency to form the plus 2 oxidation state. Now when we get to lead, which is right at the bottom of group 4, the plus 2 oxidation state is the most stable due to the inert pair effect being so strong. The inert pair effect increases down group 4. Now in this video, we're going to look at the chlorides of group 4. Now this table shows the different chlorides that exist in group 4. It tells you the type of bonding that's present in each of these chlorides and whether they react with water or not. Now, carbon exists as CCl4, carbon tetrachloride, and carbon tetrachloride is a covalent liquid which is unreactive. For example, carbon tetrachloride does not react with water. If you place carbon tetrachloride in water, it will not mix with the water, it will form two layers, and it doesn't dissolve in the water, and we say that the carbon tetrachloride is immiscible in water. Now, silicon, again, only forms one chloride, and that's SiCl4. And SiCl4 is a covalent liquid, which reacts quickly and quite violently with water in a hydrolysis reaction. And we're going to look at this reaction later. Now, germanium forms two chlorides, GeCl2, which has the oxidation state plus two, and GeCl4, where germanium is in the plus four oxidation state. GeCl2 is an ionic compound. It consists of ions held in a giant structure, a crystal lattice, and therefore it has a high melting point and is a solid at room temperature. GeCl4 is a covalent liquid, the molecules are held together by weak van der Waals forces and it doesn't have a giant structure. Therefore, it's a liquid at room temperature. Both undergo hydrolysis reactions with water. Hydrolysis reactions are reactions where bonds are broken by the action of water. Now, tin forms two different chlorides. It forms SnCl2, where the tin is in the plus two oxidation state. And SnCl2 is an ionic compound that is a solid at room temperature. The other chloride that tin forms is SnCl4, where the tin is in the plus 4 oxidation state. And this is a covalent liquid that undergoes hydrolysis reactions with water. Now lead also forms two chlorides. It forms PbCl2, which is an ionic compound, which is a solid at room temperature. Now lead 2 chloride the most stable chloride of lead is insoluble in cold water. And that's common for lead compounds. Most lead compounds are insoluble in cold water. 
it is possible to get lead 2 chloride to dissolve in hot water. Now lead 4 chloride, PBCL4, is the other chloride of lead and it's a covalent liquid which is unstable. It readily decomposes on heating to form PBCL2 and chlorine. Now PBCL4 is a covalent liquid. It's made up of simple molecules with weak van der Waals forces between the molecules. It therefore has a low melting point. Now PBCL4 also undergoes hydrolysis reactions with water. Now from this table there are a number of key points you should be aware of. First of all, all the tetrachlorides where the group 4 element is in a plus 4 oxidation state are covalent liquids. Now the group 4 chlorides that have a plus 2 oxidation state have ionic bonding and are therefore solids at room temperature. This is because the ions are held in giant structures called crystal lattices where there's strong attraction between the ions and that means the melting points are higher and that's why they're solids at room temperature. Now the second key point you need to be aware of is that all tetrachlorides apart from carbon tetrachloride undergo hydrolysis reactions with water. So now let's look at what we mean by the term hydrolysis. Now in hydrolysis reactions, bonds are broken by the action of water. SiCl4, silicon tetrachloride, reacts quickly and violently with water in a hydrolysis reaction. And a white precipitate of silicon dioxide and steamy fumes of hydrogen chloride gas are produced in this reaction. Now the chemical equation is as follows. SiCl4 plus 2H2O forms SiO2 and 4HCl. So silicon tetrachloride reacts with water to form silicon dioxide and hydrogen chloride gas. Now you may also see the precipitate written as SiOH in brackets 4. As hydrated silicon dioxide, SiO2, 2H2O, has exactly the same composition as silicon hydroxide. Now, although silicon tetrachloride reacts violently with water, carbon tetrachloride, CCl4, does not undergo hydrolysis reactions with water and is immiscible when placed in water. Now, in this video, we're going to look at the reason why silicon tetrachloride reacts violently with water but carbon tetrachloride does not. Now before we do this we're going to look at a video clip of silicon tetrachloride reacting with water and this video clip is courtesy of Cardiff University and the Royal Society of Chemistry. So here we have some SiCl4 and it's a liquid and we're going to place in the beaker a damp piece of blue litmus and instantly the SiCl4 starts reacting violently with the water on the litmus paper, producing misty fumes of hydrogen chloride gas. And you can see that the litmus paper turns red because the hydrogen chloride gas is acidic. And you will also end up with the formation of a white solid, which is silicon dioxide. So now let's look at why silicon tetrachloride reacts with water. And to do this, we need to look at the bonding in silicon tetrachloride. Now, silicon's electron arrangement is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. So now I'm going to write the electron arrangement slightly differently because I want to show the different energies that the orbitals have. So here I'm writing 1s2, 2s2, the next orbital in terms of energy is the 2p orbitals, so it's 2p6 here, so I put the electrons in singly before I pair them, and then we have 3s2, and there's two electrons here, and 3p2. And orbitals are filled singly before they pair up. Now there's a problem with this electron arrangement because there's only two unpaired electrons. And if this was the electron arrangement, whenever silicon was in a compound, we wouldn't be able to have four bonds because there's only two unpaired electrons. Now to get round this, 
silicon rearranges its electrons to allow it to have four bonds. And it does this by promoting one of the 3s electrons up to the empty 3p orbital. And this creates four orbitals, all the same energy, and we call these sp3 orbitals. Now, if I put in chlorine's electrons here, and I'm going to use a different color to represent chlorine's electrons, you can now see that these new orbitals are filled with silicon's and chlorine's electrons. Now, the reason that silicon tetrachloride is able to react with water is because there are five vacant d orbitals nearby in terms of energy that water can form bonds to. Now, when we study the mechanism of this reaction, a key intermediate involves water forming coordinate bonds to the vacant d orbitals on the silicon tetrachloride. And there are vacant d orbitals nearby in terms of energy for water to form dative bonds to. Lone pairs of electrons on the water can form dative bonds to these 3d orbitals. And the presence of these 3d orbitals is the reason why silicon tetrachloride can react with water. Now what's happening here is a form of octet expansion. Now, octet expansion is the ability of an atom to form species with more than eight electrons in the valence shell. Now, the key intermediate here involves water forming coordinate bonds to the vacant d orbitals. And when water forms coordinate bonds to the vacant d orbitals, the silicon has expanded its octet. It's got a share of more than eight electrons. And the key to this is the presence of 3d orbitals, which allow this molecule to expand its octet. Now we've seen why silicon tetrachloride can react with water. Now let's look at the reason why carbon tetrachloride does not react with water. So the electron configuration of carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So once again, I'm going to write this slightly differently to show the different energies of the orbitals. Now, in the first orbital, we have two electrons, and in the 2s, we have two electrons, and in the 2p orbitals, we have two electrons. Now, carbon has to have four bonds here, so electrons are rearranged to allow this to happen. So I'm now gonna draw this rearranged electron arrangement. So the rearrangement involves one of the 2s electrons being promoted to the empty 2p orbital and us creating four new orbitals, which are called sp3 orbitals. And these are all the same in energy. Now, if I represent chlorine's electrons with a different color here, so I'm going to pick orange again to represent chlorine's electrons. We can put these electrons in and you can see that these new orbitals we've created are full. Now, this represents the bonding in carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. Now, the reason that carbon tetrachloride doesn't react with water is that there are no vacant d orbitals nearby for the water to bond to. And by nearby, we mean near enough in energy. The next orbitals are the 3s, 3p, and 3d orbitals. And these are too far away in terms of energy for water to bond to. They're too high in energy, they're not accessible. So therefore, water doesn't bond to these. And that's why water doesn't react with carbon tetrachloride because there's no d orbitals near enough in energy for the water to bond to. So now let's turn our attention to the chlorides of lead. Now lead forms two different chlorides. It forms PbCl2, which is lead 2 chloride, and PbCl4, which is lead 4 chloride. Now lead 2 chloride is the most stable chloride of lead. It has ionic bonding 
and is a white solid at room temperature. It's unreactive with water and like most lead 2 compounds it's insoluble in cold water although it does dissolve in hot water. Now lead 4 chloride PPCl4 is unstable and it readily decomposes to form lead 2 chloride and chlorine gas. And the reason that this happens is because the plus 2 oxidation state of lead is more stable than plus 4. And this is because of the inert pair effect and the inert pair effect becomes stronger down group 4. And that's why the plus 2 oxidation state is the most stable. So now let's test your understanding of this topic with some practice questions. The first practice question is made up of three parts, part A, part B and part C. Part A and B are on this slide and part C is on the next slide. So read through the question, pause the video, have a go at parts A and B and then we look at part C. So here's question 1C. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we go for the answers to parts A, B, and C. So question 1A is asking you to give the observation expected when water is added to SiCl4, well, you'll form a white precipitate and steamy fumes. If you said that, you get one mark. Now for part B, you're asked, when CCl4 is added to water, two separate layers are formed and there is no reaction. Whilst SiCl4 reacts violently with water, give the reason for this difference, and this is a one mark question. Well, SiCl4 has available d orbitals, whilst carbon does not, so therefore water can bond to this silicon atom. One mark if you said that. So question 1C is asking you to explain in terms of their bonding and structure why group 4 tetrachlorides all have low melting points and boiling points. And this is a three mark question. Well group 4 tetrachlorides are all covalent. If you said this you get one mark. They're made up of simple molecules, no giant structures. You get a mark for this with weak van der Waal forces between the molecules. And if you said that, you get the third mark. So here's the second practice question. Once again, read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question 2A asks you to explain why lead 4 chloride readily decomposes on heating to form lead 2 chloride and chlorine gas. And this is a two mark question. Now the reason for this is that the plus two oxidation state in lead is more stable. If you said that you get one mark. And this is due to the inert pair effect becoming stronger down group four. If you said that you get the second mark. Now for part B it says lead 2 chloride is a white crystalline solid at room temperature with a melting point of 500 degrees C. Explain why it has a much higher melting point than lead 4 chloride. And this is a four mark question. So if you said lead 2 chloride has ionic bonding with oppositely charged ions held in a giant crystal lattice, you get one mark. If you mentioned that there's strong attraction between the ions, which means lots of heat energy is needed to break down the lattice and melt the lead 2 chloride, that gets you the second mark. Now to get the next mark, you need to say that lead 4 chloride has covalent bonding made up of simple molecules. If you said that, you get the third mark. And there's weak van der Waal forces between these molecules. That gets you the fourth mark. Now that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now be able to describe the bonding that exists in group 4 chlorides and how this influences the chemical and physical properties they exhibit. Secondly, you should be able to explain why carbon tetrachloride does not react with water, but silicon tetrachloride does. And finally, you should be able to describe what you see happening when SiCl4 reacts with water and be able to explain what is meant by the term octet expansion. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos and our Twitter site, at Radochemistry.